Good morning. It's 10 o'clock. Time to call to order session 7 of the Public Works Committee. I hope everyone had a good summer break. Uh, we will start by asking if there are any declarations of pecuniary interest. Seeing none, we'll move on to confirmation of the minutes. Moved by Regional Councillor Ted Smith that the minutes of the sixth meeting of the Public Works Committee is held on June 4th, 2018 be adopted as typed and circulated. Are there any questions or comments regarding the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you very much. We have a deputation this morning. I'd like to welcome Mr. Ted Chant up to the table here. Turn on your microphone. Um, do you expect that your presentation will exceed five minutes without I questions and answers? I targeting five minutes. So. All right. Thank you. Uh, welcome, um, welcome to EDC Joint Venture. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity of being able to speak to you this morning, uh, Your Worship, Council, Council staff. Is there something I'm doing wrong here? Nope. That seems to fix it. Excuse me. Before you start, I should. Uh, whoops. Here we go again. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that we're videotaping this meeting this morning. Thank you. Again, thank you very much for being able to appear. I've been calling it a deposition. I guess it isn't a deposition, but anyway, thank you. Um, back in October of 2016, the Elliston Chan Joint Venture, uh, EDCJV, uh, was awarded a contract from Public Works Government Services Canada, who are acting as an agent for Parks Canada, to construct a bundle of projects on the trans severn Waterway known as the Kirksville Bundle, Delta Dam Kirksville Bundle. Uh, my name is Ted Chant. I'm the president of the C and the EDCJV, and also the project manager for the, the project team. The bundle um, includes projects that run from the lot 37 at Bolsover to lot 43 up at the north end of Kuchiching. Uh, the, one of the, the main projects in the bundle is the, uh, the dam, the replacement of the dam at lot 38. This is an aerial of lot 38, and the, uh, the replacement structure, or the structure targeted for replacement, is on the uh, the left-hand side, of, uh, the right-hand side, I'm sorry, of the lock. Uh, the, the dam itself was built uh, circa 1908, um, doesn't meet current existing safety codes, and was designated as a high-consequence project, uh, and has got a priority in terms of delivery, uh, not only within the bundle, but within the entire Trans Severn Waterway uh, up upgrade project. The, um, like most of the, the existing dam and locks, access is very, very difficult. The uh, primary road access is on the left, from the left, from uh, Canal Road, the R50. Um, you can see the parking lot areas and the Lockmaster station, and the EDCJV trailer is actually set up in that in that parking lot. So, um, in planning the work and planning the reconstruction of this project, it is a complete replacement in kind. So, hopefully, uh, I guess two years from now, it'll look pretty much like what it does now, um, trying to preserve the heritage value and, and a number of other objectives of the project. But the access is very, very difficult. So, our plan is to access the site from the south. Uh, Parks Canada has lands on the south abutment and has a right of way from the um, Ball subdivision, I think it's Ball Avenue East, to, uh, to their lands, which I'll show you in a second. I just wanted to kind of emphasize again that the access is tough for the navigation period. There's really no access for equipment to the site, and during the non navigation uh, time frame, it's, uh, it's pretty much restricted to personnel access. The, uh, the PCA-owned lands are shown in purple on the diagram. If you look up at the top, uh, top left-hand corner, there's the dam at Lot 38, which is the project. Um, PCA lands on the south abutment are, are, are shaded in purple, as I mentioned, and the PCA right-of-way to those lands is also shaded in purple. The, um, the access is narrow, it's tight, and uh, some time ago it came to our attention that the township owned a piece of property in the Ball subdivision. And that's highlighted in, I believe it's orange, a little color blind, but the, that, that we call the subject property. So the, um, what we uh, decided to do is on, uh, I think it was August 20th, I met with uh, Public Works, uh, with um, Mr. Fucci, and uh, he said that, uh, he suggested that I write a, an expression of interest to, uh, with respect to the property, and that um, I would get an opportunity to present my case for leasing the property in front of the Public Works Committee. So that brings us to today. If you look at the, uh, the access off Highway 48, um, traffic management into the site will be a little bit of a challenge. 
with the existing, if we're only able to use the existing right of way, uh, there's a hard left and then a hard right, very narrow entranceway. Uh, if you're familiar with the site, there's a hydro pole and, and some telephone lines right at the entranceway to the, the right of way. So um, I guess what I'm here to ask and talk to you about today is, uh, is the possibility of looking into leasing that property, the subject property from the township for um, a period of, uh, call it October 2018 to November 2020. I'll come back to that drawing, but I just have a couple of streetscapes. I don't know if everybody's familiar with the ball subdivision, but the property uh, is on the uh, on the left-hand side of the photo. Most of the coverage, uh, the uh, vegetation coverage, is uh, deciduous, meaning that in the summer and uh, late spring, summer, and early fall, there's a pretty good tree screen from the, the local residents. Um, but in the winter time, we'll have some uh, we'll have some screening issues that will need to be addressed, uh, and that's one of the the items on the agenda to, to talk about with staff, should we be able to move forward. This is looking down the other way, so the PCA right of way into their property is just about where the sun shows, where the, it transitions from shade to, to sun, and again you can see the cover on the property is mostly, uh, mostly deciduous. So the ask, uh, what, we were, what we're asking basically is for the township staff to be empowered to develop an MOU with us. Uh, that would reserve the property for EDCJV through 2020. And that during the discussions around that MOU, um, we would identify all the key provisions of a, of a probable, what a probable future land lease would look like. Uh, traffic management, traffic calming, screening res restrictions, um, re restoration expectations of the township when we were finished, when we were turning the keys back in 2020, and, um, and things of like nature. The, uh, we would look for the, we'd ask that the MOU be concluded by September 30th. We, we have this MOU phase because we think it might be a little bit quicker than entering into a land lease. And um, that, that was just sort of a, an interim step. But, and that would enable us to, uh, to really analyze the benefits and the costs of, of, of what exactly this, this would look like. In terms of key provisions of the MOU, again, just touching on things, the land lease costs, obviously, traffic management expectations. Uh, of the township and, and the community, the ball subdivision, any restrictions on hours of work, no debatement strategies, uh, winter and spring screening, as I mentioned during the summer, I think will be good. What uh, the thought would be is we'd leave a tree screen and then uh, within the area, um, a, a protected area of, of no stripping or grubbing to protect the tree roots with the tree screen. And the tree screen would be large enough that, uh, that it would sustain itself. Uh, any lighting restrictions, dust control, and, and I mentioned uh, restoration requirements. And then we would uh, we would want a clause in there, or would like a clause in there, that uh, that allowed assignment of the MOU to the general contractor of the project once he's selected. Um, and that's that's the ask. And I think I'm pushing my five minutes. So thank you very much for hearing us, and I'm certainly available for questions, comments. I'll go back to the property. Uh, slide. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Councillor Lodwick. Uh, yes, thank you for your presentation. Um, in terms of hours of operation, what is your expectation for your, for your company to be doing? I'm going to roll it now. Mm -hmm. There, typically, it's a 50-hour work week, um, which would be five 10-hour shifts. That's essentially the heavy civil uh, norm uh, these days. Uh, in the, this particular, in the fall of this year and over the winter months up until the closure of the fishery window in March 15, 2019, there will be additional hours of work. Um, we have a lot, a lot of work to get done before that fishery window closes on March 15. But the typical work week would be five 10 with some light shift work on the Saturday. Uh, we had a major concrete pour at the Talbot Dam on Friday, and we had four people in on Saturday working with securing and keeping things cool and cleaning up and stuff like that. But the, the basic work week is five, ten hour shifts. Regional Councilor Smith. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Campbell, for you. Um, I guess uh, this question is. Uh, some of it to to staff and, and uh, in a situation like this, um, will the neighbors uh, need to be notified and have input uh, in terms of a I guess I'll call it a change of use uh, 
If this was a property in any other subdivision, would it have to go through a rezoning or, or uh, something like this for a, a change in, well, a change in use? You know? uh, realizing this is a lease rather than a purchase. Um, I guess the short answer would be no. I don't believe that a, a public consultation is, is necessary, although um, certainly if the township was receptive to it, I think, you know, at least as a courtesy, the neighbors should be notified. And uh, uh, typically with construction projects, uh, road construction projects, the contractor uh, on our direction would circulate notice to members of the public that may be affected um, with the construction activity. All right, thank you. Um, to, uh, to Mr. Chant, um, what would a typical workday traffic be like in there? Would, would there be just a matter of people uh, accessing it that are working on the project, or, or would there be large uh, vehicles, uh, cement trucks and cranes and that sort of stuff going in and out? The um, the uh, our initial concept solution to that is that the there, we would keep employee parking off to the other side to the existing parking areas and perhaps expanding um, uh, expanding the existing parking lot over at the lock the lockmaster station to accompany the employees they can walk across. Uh, in the um, winter time, they can walk across the uh, the lock on a passerail, just a, a pedestrian walkway. And then in the summertime, of course, they can make their way across the gates if necessary. So the uh, the primary objective there would there would be ready mix trucks. There's about um, I think there's about 1,452 cubic meters, of con 1,588. Yeah, there's about 2,300 cubic meters of concrete in the project. Uh, so that all that ready mix truck would come in would come in, but it's they're 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 fairly limited pours. I think there's like the Talbot Dam, we have 15 pours total. I'm assuming over there there'd be something in that order of magnitude. So there'd be 15 days of heavy ready mix traffic over the course of two years, basically. There is um, delivery of uh, the coffer dam materials. There's steel coffer dams upstream and downstream of the of the dam. All that material would be delivered through there. So there'd be periods of time of fairly intense traffic. Uh, but uh, the day-to-day -day traffic would be would be fairly limited, but there would be periods of time where there would be some pretty heavy traffic. Thank you. Uh, I I uh, and, and I realize that the, in that area the, the traffic by necessity is going to be going slow, um, and therefore won't be very noisy. I I, I get that. I just one final question. Um, you mentioned the. This would be a, a minimum two-year lease with possibility of longer. Is there any interest uh, on the that you're aware of, of Parks Canada or EDCJB purchasing the property if it was uh, uh, available? Uh, uh, to be completely honest, this is a piece of property I didn't realize the township owned. Um, is there a, any thought given to that, or, or is the, uh, at least uh, your preference? The uh, the lease is definitely the uh, the lease is definitely the preference for EDCJV. We're a uh, you know construction manager with a fixed term contract. Um, We've been dealing with Parks Canada and Public Works now for a period of two years, and I, I think I can say with some degree of confidence that they're not interested in acquiring, acquiring land, which would be a question you'd have to ask them. But my gut feeling would be that they wouldn't be interested in the, in the property. And uh, because of the short-term nature of our involvement, we, uh, we wouldn't be either. The lease would be very much the preferred option. Councilor Miller. Yes, thank you. Um, you chair to Mr. Chant. Thank you for your deputation. A um, couple questions. Um, the, what would be the source of your granule um, materials to construct the access roadway and um, staging area? 
We haven't finalized those, but all the materials coming from the Delta Dam, the Talbot Dam are coming from the Lafarge Quarry, uh, north of Cambridge. So the, the access route would be down 12 to 48, along 48, and in through the, through the access. The granular quantities aren't, uh, aren't that large. For the, to construct the, uh, I'm going to give you the numbers that are actually, that we've got taken off for the blue, the purple there. Uh, there's about 400 cubic meters of granular material required for that particular uh, access road, and then there'll be some yard plating and uh, and laydown area construction with on the on the purple uh, PCA land. So if you kind of look at the the length of road that we're looking at developing and what we'd like to do with the subject property, I would assume that quantity would be about the same. We'd also like to along the sides of uh, if, if those of you have maybe been out of the site, the, we've extended the Thoreau side road from where it stopped previously down to the Talbot Basin. And uh, the road is quite large uh, in terms of width because we use it as a staging and lay down area and also a staging area for the trucks. There's no real place to, uh, to stage the ready mix trucks down on the actual site. So they'll be sort of sitting there waiting and then they'll be called up. And so the road will be a, an over width road called a sort of a extra wide access road that, uh, that we'll use as a staging area as well. That's one of the one of the advantages of the such a property over the other. We can't do that, obviously. I think it's a it's a very very narrow right away. We'll be confined to one-way traffic in and out. With regards to the comment on speed, uh, I mean traffic. We, we've I've done something like this once before, and uh, there were some traffic calming measures that uh, that the local municipality had asked for, um, and you know that's definitely on the table. Anything that uh, anything that that staff would like in order to make this work would be certainly am amicable. To Um, thank you. And um, do you, um, Chair Campbell, to staff, would this require a uh, fill application? For the subject property, I would say probably not, because the proposal is basically to clear a portion of it for a staging area. The materials that are being imported granulars, concrete, and so on, um, uh, you know, essentially are going on lands owned by Parks Canada. Um, so I, I would suggest probably not. It's not like they're going to fill our property. It's just a staging area for the construction site, which is on federal property. Still on first round. Mayor Grant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning and through you. I uh, have a few questions, if you don't mind. Uh, the, I'll start with the area in purple, um, the adjacent property owners, so they'll be on the left side of the screen. Do they, in fact, treat that property as their own and uh, cut it and maintain it down to the uh, Water's edge. Um, I can only say by observation. I'm not familiar with their maintenance practices per se, but I, if no, mm -hmm. it's basically wild. Um, there's some trails through there, but I don't, I okay. don't believe that okay, they, so uh, they actively maintain. It's not cut grass or anything like that. It's, okay. it's uh, pretty much bush. Having access through the subject property to the PCA land. Um, so there'll be vegetation removed there as well? Okay. And the storage of equipment and vehicles, uh, is it on the subject property or on the PCA land? I mean, if I had my brothers, I'd like to keep it as flexible as possible, but if there was a, a concern about that in terms of, uh, you know, fueling stations or things that, that might... Um, might result in some sort of legacy problem on the property, we can certainly put that in as a constraint. But, but generally speaking, we would want to keep our options open as to how that property was, was used in terms of, you know, the, that if somebody came in and saw a generator or a light plant or something parked there, that it wouldn't be in violation of a covenant that we've made. But if that's required, then we're, we're certainly open to have that restriction on there. The subject property, um, I kind of look from the photos that it's fully vegetated with trees. Like a wood lot? It's like a wood lot, yeah. And how much of that wood lot would need to be removed? Well, I, again, I guess the, in our preliminary thinking, what we did is we took a three meter, uh, I believe it's outlined in my expression of interest to the, to the township. Um, 
We've envisioned a three-meter tree screen around, around the periphery of the, of the property with a two-meter uh, area which wouldn't be uh, grubbed, uh, the stumps wouldn't be removed, and, uh, and it wouldn't be stripped. And we found that that's a, a pretty good insurance to ensure that the tree, scram sur the tree uh, uh, screen survives. Uh, these trees are used to having neighbors, and if you take a take the chunk immediately adjacent out to them, sometimes it stresses. So we found that that two-meter sort of untouched area, cleared but untouched, uh, certainly helps preserve the, uh, the health of the, of the tree screen. So if you could envision sort of a, a five meter strip around the outside, that would be, uh, that would be ideal. Um, and then uh, the, in, the interior would be cleared. And uh, whatever restoration program uh, you know, the, the, the township and the EDCJV came up with at the end of that would, would kind of fit into that. Just a quick touch on the fill permit question. Uh, in, our, in our view, all those fills that came in are temporary and they'd all come out. If there was some interest on the township of, of developing the property or leaving the, the access road there or having, you know, I don't know, sort of a parking area or something like that. We could certainly discuss that. But the intent going in is that everything that comes in would come out. And um, do you have an idea yet on where the access road would be on the subject property? Or is it a diagonal across? Is it coming off Ball Avenue east-west or, or south? So uh, again, thinking is a little bit preliminary, but the, um, the ideal uh, traffic movement would be about halfway down the, uh, the side that's on Ball Avenue East. I know they're both on, but the one that's on the cul-de-sac of Ball Avenue East, about midpoint there, um, sort of a 45 degree angle off of Ball Avenue to meet, to cut across and meet the, uh, the junction with the, uh, the larger PCA land. The, uh, the, the movements, traffic movements in and out, um, with, with uh, some of the larger floats, uh, the flatback trailers and things like that are much easier if you have that uh, as, a, as opposed to the 90. One of the challenges with the PCA right away is making the 90 degree. We probably have to stage on the road and, and you know, rehandle the, the materials and move them in, like I'm talking about the steel for the coffer dam and things like that, um, whereas the 45 is, uh, is a lot more conducive to the traffic movement. So that, that would be what we would envision happening. I guess my last question uh, would be the size of the lot. Um, do you know what the frontages are on these? Uh, I do not. Okay. I guess we'll find out then. Thank you. Round two, Councillor Lodway. Um, just one question. <clears throat> what standard will the lot look like when you're done? Well, that's something we could uh, we could work with the township on, uh, and uh, Mr. Cruz and I had some sort of preliminary thoughts about that. But it was just uh, really it's the standard you'd like back. I mean, we're obviously uh, not in the business of planting 30 foot high deciduous trees, but um, it's I guess the restoration we would be doing on the Park Canada land would essentially be removing all the imported fills that we had, um, disking or preparing the subsoil, maybe topping it up to make sure that it drains properly over the long term, and then topsoiling and seeding with the the, the mix that, uh, that we're typically using is a Simcoe County mix, which is a, a bit of a high-end mix full of indigenous uh, and different pattern type of, uh, of grasses, um, but also plantings of, of saplings and plantings of uh, small coniferous trees if you're looking for a better mix. Um, certainly would be on the development of pathways. What, you know, it's all kind of inherent in, in what the township's looking for as an end use after the Just a further comment that I actually don't mind this plan because I think it's going to be easier on our roads and it's going to be a lot quieter, I think, for our, our neighborhood as well. Councillor Schaefer. Well, thank you for you. Um, I, I just want clarification from um, Councillor Smith's question to staff. Um, are you saying that we it's not necessary for us to... Um, have some kind of an open forum with the residents there to let them know of what's going on. I just, I just would like clarification of that. Well, there's nothing that is, um, there's no bylaws or operating procedure that requires you to undertake public consultation because um, you're not anticipating the sale of this property under the sale of land bylaw. Uh, however, um, certainly as a courtesy, um, it's normal practice for, for any construction project to 
township or regional that um, the affected uh, neighbors be notified of um, what is happening. And, and presumably that may be part of Parks Canada's uh, mandate right now, just with the restoration of, of the dam, that, you know, so that the public is aware the dam is going to be replaced and there will be construction activities. I guess the only concern I have is, is, is um, and I don't disagree with the public consultation, the issue is timing. We're, we're running out of time here. Um, because as of October 1st, this council will no longer be in session until the next term of council. If I could just expand on that uh, through to you, have you uh, thought of any measures to um, inform the residents to make them aware of what's going on, uh, to make them part of the project so that uh, they're aware? Under the uh, understanding with Parks Canada and Public Works, they pretty much handle the public face of the project. Uh, I do know that they have been in contact with the three residents that back onto the PCA lands, the three property owners there, the ones to the left of the uh, right of way. Um, and there's some, um, some agreements in place with regards to what that back lot fence is going to look like, uh, both during construction and at completion, because we've, we've seen, we've been privy to those discussions, obviously we have to implement them. So. We've, we've seen some of that, and they're, uh, but they're pretty much in charge of reaching out to the, we, we advise and they instruct and that's kind of how that, that they, they really want to be the face of the project. So um, if, if there's a public inquiry to us, we basically defer it to Parks Canada's public information officer. Uh, it's not to say we don't chat them up and, and have converse, conversations and answer questions, but the, the real face of the project is, is Parks Canada. But just to clarify, there has already been discussions with those property owners uh, that are adjacent to it and, and they're fully aware of, of what's going on and have been a part of the process. Uh, it's my understanding, yes, and I can, I can say with certainty the ones that back on to the, that are to the uh, left of the right of way, I am not sure the contacts that have been made on the ones, uh, the residents uh, around the cul-de-sac. But I do know for sure that because there's been outcomes, uh, they were out looking for butternut samplings on, uh, on Friday past. Uh, the Parks Canada was. Councillor Miller. Thank you, Sue, you Chair Campbell. Um, we can't forget the wildlife. So when is the uh, time frame for clearing for one um, it doesn't affect the birds nesting? Will this happen prior to spring? The bird nesting restriction is uh, April I can't remember if it's April 30th or March 30th. I think it's April 30th to August 30th. So the clearing would, would happen outside of that period. And there is no, um, there is a species of risk identified on the other side, the whippoorwill. Uh, there's some whippoorwill habitat on the other side of the river uh, in lands adjacent to the Logmaster Station. But there's, I don't believe there's any Sarah, uh, Sarah issues on, on this particular side. So it would be the, the standard bird nesting. So I believe it's April 30th to, to August 30th, definitely to August 30th. Any other questions or comments from Council? Mayor Grant. How about another one? <coughs> Do you have a plan B or a plan C if you, this doesn't work out? I guess it's our job to have plan B's and plan C's. Um, well, plan A was actually the, the PCA right of way and to manage the turning areas um, into that. Uh, I, it is possible to get uh, you know some of the wet deliveries like ready mixed concrete in there, um, but uh, it's, I, I think it would it would involve staging. Some of the sheet pile um, materials are going to be quite long. They'll be the legal load, like 53 feet, something like that. And uh, I don't believe that those trucks, those kind of trucks, will be able to make the corner with the restrictions that are there. So they'll have to be staged and offloaded uh, at the entrance to the, the right of way. And then also um, on the other side of the river, I mean during the non-navigation period, which is Canadian Thanksgiving through to the Victoria Long Weekend, essentially, we, there it is possible to cross the canal, like the canal they don't use, the canal to pass water during the winter time. So it is possible to cross the lock, but it's, uh, that's a pretty substantive um, installation that isn't valid for the navigation period. Right? It's, it's, it'll, there's no room to ramp up and over the lock, and that'd be extremely expensive. So it's going to be basically a flush bridge over, and uh, that won't be conducive to passing boats during the navigation period. 
So uh, during the non-navigation period, there's there's a few alternatives, but during the navigation period, which is unfortunately the construction season, this is a little bit at odds with the with the normal way things are done. Um, uh, during the navigation season, the plan B would be the PCA right away. Thank you. I have a motion here from Councillor Lodwick regarding your correspondence 1651 and your request. Move that the committee approve that staff continue to work with EDCJV to negotiate a lease for the subject land. Questions or comments from Council? All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Well, moving on to uh, com communications, moved by Mayor Grant, the communications 1164, 1165, 1532, 1541, 1548, 1560, 1637, 1638, and 1648 be received for information. Are there any comments or questions regarding this correspondence from the committee? Mayor Grant. Thank you. Um, I guess perhaps Mr. Chant would like to leave, but isn't that to stay for the rest of it? Well, you're welcome to stay or you're welcome <laughs> to <laughs> escape, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple of... Uh,